morning and welcome to Mormon Times. It's a blessing that many of us take for granted, the ability to attend church services on Sunday. Well, for one faithful man, a debilitating illness left him at home and without church callings for the first time in his life. But in his darkest hours of depression and pain, he found hope and power in the written word. Well, about two years ago, I noticed that I was uh, getting some pain in my legs. The pain was tingling, it was burning, it was hot and cold, it was electrical shocks. I couldn't sit through church, I couldn't work. Um, I was really stuck at home, it was just so painful. There were nights where I was two and three and four times praying to Father, just to help me get through this night. And I've learned over the years, it doesn't make any sense to blame God or blame anybody else or to say this isn't fair. God, what do you want me to learn from this? And first on the list was patience. So I'd always known that the best way to forget your problems is to serve others. And the thought occurred to me, I could write our missionaries. My name is Jonathan Black. I served in the Minnesota Minneapolis Mission. I'm Andrew Nieves, and I served in the Oklahoma Tulsa Mission. I'm Katie Wagner, and I served in the Charlotte, North Carolina Mission. I know Dave Dewey from church. He was a really good friend of my dad's. But I didn't know him too well, but what I did know is that he was a very righteous man, and that he was a man that tried to follow Jesus Christ. He's the kind of guy that all young men should aspire to be, and all young women should aspire to marry. The first time I got a letter from Dave Dewey, it was, it was awesome. Um, one, because I hadn't got a letter for a long time from anybody. Uh, when I first got uh, a letter from him, I was surprised. And my purpose in that, I think, besides having something to do, was to just support the work. I've always been a big supporter of the missionary work and believe if you can do that in any way, you'll be blessed for it. I loved uh, Brother Dewey's personal stories that he shared. Um, and a lot of quotes from books that he was reading. And for a lot of my mission, he wrote to me about becoming a better disciple of Christ. Oh, as he was writing me, he told me that that was kind of the journey he was on. Every letter that he, he wrote to me uh, meant something, that it was something to help me in, the, in that moment. He always wrote me right when I needed it, and it was always seemed to pertain exactly to what I was going through at the time. They said such tremendous things. They were so grateful. And so appreciative, I couldn't believe it. And I found that it was therapeutic for me. Took my mind off my miseries. I think a letter means a lot to a missionary. A letter does so much for your morale. Somebody can tell you something, but when it's in writing, it's forever. Brother Dewey's letters meant everything to me. You know, it was something that I looked forward to coming home to seeing him and thanking him in okay. person and giving him a hug and just letting him know truly how much he, how much he helps me throughout my missions. Um, he took what he could do and he ran with it. Yeah, that inspired me to know that no matter what I'm going through, there's always opportunity for me to serve other people. Everything about him just inspires me to say, one day I want to be more like Dave Dewey. I'm absolutely certain that in spite of their saying I had done something good for them, they did far more good for me. May God continue to bless you as you're engaged in his work. It's all true. As always, I remain your brother in the gospel. As always, I remain your brother in the gospel. As always, I remain your brother in the gospel. Brother Dewey. Dewey. And the good news is Dave Dewey's health continues to improve. And he says to him, the most important information on the ward bulletin is where they list the missionaries' addresses. He continues to write the missionaries in his ward every month. Well, speaking of missionaries,